Nino, a two to three degree warming in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. In itself, not too alarming, but add that with the subtle effects of global warming, the hole in the ozone layer, and the effects of industrial pollution, and you get another dry winter. We were looking for the simpler things in life, good snow and good friends. So we flew, drove, walked and crawled across nine countries, four continents, drank 32,000 cups of coffee, ate 40 bottles of aspirin, in search of deep powder. We had become what we sought. We were Riders on the Storm. It had been 12 years since the advent of snowboarding. In that time, it had gone from savagery to the most dominating force in the ski slopes today. Whilst all the trials and tribulations of the world continued on, Fall Line Films once again brought together some friends to snowboard around the globe and offer some of our opinions. Oh, wow. Cooling. Between the years of 1965 and 73, over a billion people were born to this world. We whittled that down to 25 of snowboarding's legends and soon to be legends. In the middle of October, it's hard to find snow in the U.S., but in the southern hemisphere of the American continents, we knew we'd find powder. An hour and a half out of Santiago, Chile, on the Pan American Highway, we found a resort that had fresh powder, 150 Argentine senoritas, and a disco like no other. Its name? Portillo. <laughs>
Portillo's the club med of South America. A 200 room hotel, disco, restaurant, pool and bar, all self-contained. The same people you eat with, you ski, swim and party with. Most days are a week, which is almost too long considering the disco doesn't even start until 1 a.m. Guys who can't speak Spanish gotta have some kind of gimmick. And this happens to be mine. I just want to be able to do some spraying in Chilean. You know what I'm saying? Well, I just want to come back, speak some Spanish, have the intellectual scene. It was a 22-hour trip home from the powder of South America, and a three-month wait for anything resembling that in Lake Tahoe. Everybody just stops driving their cars around and stops eating out of styrofoam containers, you know? It's probably too late, but maybe if we all stop now, we might be able to get some pal sessions in about, you know, three, four hundred thousand years from now. With the Tahoe region at 30% of its normal snowfall, we were happy to find wind pack in the backcountry of Alpine Meadows. December, with no new snow in Tahoe, we threw it into a panic. We sent one crew to Montana and the other to Whistler Blackcomb. The crew in Montana was plagued by the long arm of El Nino and followed by rain. While farther north in Canada, that rain turned to snow. Got here last 
Tuesday and it's been snowing one to two feet every day since the day we got here. And Dan has been showing us around a lot of secret spots, it's been rad. And I've, I've done more staircase jumps in the last four days than I've done in all my snowboarding ever put together. There's just like so many staircase jumps and pillows. It's just rad and there's tons of powder every morning. It's killer. We, we, de we definitely got good timing. But all the stuff that we've been doing, all inbounds, all uh, hidden, but all accessible by lifts. Easy to find stuff if you know where to go. The same day, clouds moved in for what we thought was the continuation of the ultimate storm. But El Nino slapped us in the face yet again. The snowflakes turned to rain, melting what snow we had. Panic set in again. So we sent John Cardiel and Steve Graham to find what snow was left at the western front hit. <laughs>
We continued to watch the snow dwindle and decided we weren't yet ready for spring, so we hit the road. Parada, Farmer, and Ranquit went to Europe, while Sioni and Graham checked out all their friends at the World Cup in Japan. Europe, so immense, so vast, peaks beyond 14,000 feet, but not a drop of snow in four weeks. So we opted for the See the Europe at a Glance car tour, in Bert's car, of course. While back in Japan, they had more snow than they knew what to do with. Same dock as Ranklin and Roach. Yeah. Okay. The same dock. If they sh ship me out of the front desk area, then I'll be bummed. I'm gonna roll out air to fakey. Uh -huh. And then uh, El Gary will sad plant. So I think you spelled out Gary wrong. I did, didn't I? It's a shame, you know. 
What's a shame? That that's snowboard competition. Because I've seen you guys do a lot better things than what you see in these competitions. So. <laughs> the most disgusting thing I've seen in 10 minutes. It's kind of early in the morning for me to comment right now. Not, I need a cappuccino. Before I start functioning properly. What do you got? A lion pit. This is the first record album you bought when you were a kid. Steppenwolf. Born to be wild. How old were you? Fifth grade. You know how old is that? Thanks, Brown. Incredible. Awesome. Both Caesars Palace away. Huh? Looks like they missed a spot right there. <laughs> Three conflicts by car, one bloody nose for Sean Farmer, cold cobblestone streets for Mike Ranquit, and 2,000 miles in Burt Lamar's car. And then we got a call from Peace Artiste. They said it snowed. We called Steve Graham and told him to meet us at the Portis de Sole region, or Doorway to the Sun. Champery, located on the Swiss, French, and Italian border. It would take you weeks to explore its 400 square kilometers of scheme. With over 200 chairlifts, you're lucky if you make it back to the right country before the chairlifts close for the day.
Hey, Jared! Oh my god! <laughs> what the hell? Let's do the freaking run! Was it defeated? You saw it! Shoot, they did, my friend! That's the last head they're ever gonna cut, man! To Christine's wonderful creation. Oh, yes. Christina. May her spoon always be in my kitchen. <laughs> And now, a freestyle moment from Ishko, Austria, and Aspen Highlands. In the year 1846, the Donner Party attempted to cross one of the highest passes in the Northern Sierras. They were unsuccessful and had to stop to repair a wagon. Winter set in. With drifts of snow over 20 feet, they were trapped. Food supplies ran out and they turned to cannibalism. Now, 146 years later, there's a 7-Eleven three blocks from the tragic site, and we haven't had 20 feet of snow in years. But the summit they tried to cross is dutifully named Donner Summit, and is still famous for deep snow.
Politics is the control of wealth and power. You are being conditioned to condemn politics as petty and boring. Thus granting all the more control to the powers that be. You're either a part of the problem or part of the solution. The choice is yours. What has your experience with snowboarders been like? Our experience with the snowboarders has been absolutely great. Accelerating fun and joyful. moment was my first run that we filmed, actually the second run, because I jumped this rock that Steve had pointed out for me, and I didn't really expect it to be very big, but I got in the air and ended up being about 30 or 35 feet, and I just held my board and kept going and going, and finally I landed, but I was kind of feeling wobbly, but it was a fun area. Didn't really expect it to be that good. The best thing about snowboarding and films is just being able to free ride, have a good time with your friends, um, riding with you know, good riders like Craig and everyone else, and just doing what you like to do every day, you know, just trying to go big and not land on your head too many times. And now, a freestyle moment with Jeff Brushy. Refinement, sophistication, impeccable performance. Three hours across the Canadian border in British Columbia, there live a bunch of people that fly helicopters every day for a living. We talked them into dropping us off on a couple of peaks for a small promotional fee. They were Selkirk Tangier's Heli Service. The day before the trip, a friend called asking us to give a chance to a guy named Matt Goodwill. We said, Matt who? But after some persuasion, we gave him a chance. And by the end of the trip, we definitely knew the name, Matt Goodwill. Yeah. 
quote from Dave Sioni. Greenland, lots of cool natives, in the middle of nowhere, and no shower for a week. It was great. Freestyle moment with Jamie Lynn. The spirit of competition, the drive to excel, the sweet taste of victory. In 1964, on Good Friday, an earthquake rocked the seaside village of Valdez, Alaska. What wasn't destroyed by the quake was demolished by the tsunami created by the cracked ocean floor. 25 years later, on Good Friday, the largest oil spill in our history happened as the Exxon Valdez hit Bly Reef. Three years after that, on Good Friday, snowboarders rolled into the same town of Valdez for the first annual World Extreme Snowboard Championships. The worst disaster yet. Well, the toughest one for criteria is fluidity. It's hard to flow when you're scared. It was like a downhill rodeo. Cowboys from all over the world came to ride the bull and take the title. There were five elements of criteria. Fluidity, control, difficulty of line, air, and style. The three-day contest was completely helicopter accessed, and most sites were first to sense. Thirty miles north of Valdez lies the Santa Lodge, 
a small hole in the wall with some of the best food west of the Mississippi, and by far the best heli skiing in the United States. We met some of the coolest people there. You know all that stuff about frontier gibberish, the last free place. Well, it's pretty much true. You can take a helicopter anywhere you want. You tell them to land, and they put you there. The rest is up to you. Most important thing is um, staying in control and and uh, keeping your fluidity, and keeping your style the whole way down. Day two put a scare into everyone. A 3,000 foot vertical rock and snow face. A fall in the wrong place, and you might not stop until the hospital. You're allowed to pick your own line, for better or for worse. Towards the end of the day, Tech found out what changing snow conditions could really mean.
day three, the last day to make an impression on the judges. The final chance to take home the prize. But to tell you the truth, no one really cared. At this point, everyone was stoked to be healthy and alive. People were more concerned about riding for themselves rather than any judges. It was just another day of heli skiing. I think these chances are unnatural chances that are, that are pushed unnaturally. It's not necessarily what people want to do, but they're put into a situation where they have to push the limits, and uh, and they're pushing them maybe not the day that they're ready. Because a lot of times to do something really extreme, you wait for conditions maybe up to a year for things to be right, and then you do it. Here, we're just, the day's here, we're doing it, and that's that. With the contest over, the ritual of festival and sacrifice began. And once again, we were all stoked. No one got hurt. And now, a freestyle moment with Sean Palmer. Smooth. Easy. Charming. Suave. Cool.
As with everything in life that comes full circle, so did we. We were back in Chile. The date, August 27th, 1992. An hour and a half the other way out of Santiago, you find 147 switchbacks. And right after that, the resort of Valle Novato. And now for your viewing enjoyment, Terry A. Hawkinson, Chris Roach, and Two Feet of Fresh. You're leaving You're leaving here Never seduce me, never seduce me, seduce me again So that you can know What I believe in, what I believe in, believe in you Destruction Tour. 